A growing number of Democrats have been pressuring Clarence Thomas to either resign entirely from the SCOTUS or at least recuse himself from any cases having to do with January 6th or with the financial connections of his wife, Ginny Thomas, after it was revealed earlier that she had sent a number of incredibly conspiratorial text messages encouraging Mark Meadows and Donald Trump to end democracy in America. They say that they're concerned about that. Sean Hannity has a different theory. We'll get to that in one sec. But first, you should know that I believe she might have been the first. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was calling for him to resign, but a number of others have as well, including representatives of Veronica Escobar of Texas, Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, Hank Johnson of Georgia, and New York Democrat Nydia Velasquez at all. Now, as you probably already know, but just in case, Jenny Thomas texted former Trump administration chief of staff Mark Meadows 29 times in the weeks after the 2020 election. A number of those texts that she sent included conspiratorial calls or updates that Biden and his team were about to be arrested and sent to Guantanamo and those sorts of things. It was insanity. But the individual content, as bad as it sounds, isn't a big issue for the right if they just don't acknowledge it at all. As you'll see, Sean Hannity has a theory about why they're really calling for Clarence Thomas to step down, but he's not actually gonna engage with the content of the text. Take a look. Let me go to the case of Clarence Thomas. Okay, so Clarence Thomas's wife has opinions. Is she not free to express them? I think it would be natural for people that are dating, people that are married. There probably are a number of issues people disagree on, a number of issues they agree on. If that's the case, if that's the standard now Democrats want to set, wouldn't that apply to Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and the laptop? And wouldn't Joe equally have to be impeached himself or recused as they're trying to do to Clarence Thomas? Okay, so if you're wondering how long it would take them to make this about Hunter Biden, it was about five seconds or so. But Josh Hawley there, who is joining Sean Hannity, maybe even has a worse theory. Take a look at this. I look forward to all of the calls for Joe Biden's resignation from all of these Democrats on exactly the same logic that you just outlined, Sean. So, you know, if Hunter Biden ends up getting indicted, as looks increasingly likely, then I guess the president needs to resign for that. I mean, here's the bottom line. This is ridiculous, these attacks on Justice Thomas and the idea that Jenny Thomas's wife is supposed to sign off on her texts and on her work with her husband as if he's in charge of her in some way. Isn't that misogyny? Isn't that exactly what the Democrats are always saying that they're against? But the truth is, is that they will take any avenue they can to try and smear Justice Thomas. And Republicans have got to stand up against it and say, we're not going to let you smear and rig the Supreme Court, which is what they're trying to do. Yes, the last thing the right would want would be a Supreme Court justice to be smeared. I mean, they just spent, what, two weeks pretending that because there was a book that was in a school that Katanji Brown Jackson was affiliated with that had a message that they misinterpreted, that's reason for her to not get onto the SCOTUS. But the fact that Clarence Thomas is not recusing himself, and in fact, is voting as the lone dissenting justice in cases involving January 6th. Directly involving content that Ginny Thomas in her conspiratorial QAnon rantings was pushing for the outcome that he seems to be perfectly fine with. This is absolutely nonsensical, trying to make it about misogyny, trying to make it about Hunter Biden. They're not going to acknowledge what was actually in there. If Hunt, if it turned out that Katanji Brown Jackson's husband was texting things like this jank, do you think that they'd be fine with it? Would they ignore the content of the text messages? Yeah, so um, first of all, Holly is specifically the guy who smeared Joe Jackson. Mm-hmm. Like, not like, oh, one of his colleagues did it. Isn't that ironic? No, it was him. And then he comes on Fox News and goes, Can you believe they're smearing a Supreme Court justice? I mean, I think they're doing it on purpose uh, because I. Number one, as we've gone over a million times, right wingers don't care about irony or hypocrisy. And number two, if they do, they you know they're like, oh, way to troll them, way to do exactly what you said not to do. We think that's great. I don't know why you think that's great, but apparently, right wing voters do. All right, number two, this is obvious sleight of hand, but of course, with right wing voters, you always have to speak slowly because things are not obvious to them. So. It's not just that Ginny Thomas is a family member of Clarence Thomas, and that's why we think, oh, she speaks for him or he speaks for her. And it's so hence, oh, that's a man speaking on behalf of a woman, and that's actually Clarence. Nobody said that. 
No, the case is coming before a judge and one of the people involved in that plot is his wife. Does anyone think that that judge should stay on that case? Of course not. You divorce politics from it, let's say it's a criminal case, civil case, it doesn't matter. And let's say that you're one of the people involved in the case and the person on the other side is the judge's wife. Do you think the judge is gonna be fair? Do you trust the judge to be fair? No, of course the judge has to recuse himself. She sent text messages about the plot on January 6 to Mark Meadows, the chief of staff, to the president. When a case comes before the Supreme Court about that same exact plot, it's insane not to recuse yourself. It's not even a question, it's not debatable. Mm -hmm. So as always, there's just nonstop fake debates at the right wing starts. Like we point out, hey, Obviously, now that we know Jenny Thomas was part of the plot and it's indisputable, Clarence Thomas clearly should not, he shouldn't have been in the cases in the first place. That was a wild violation of ethics, but he certainly shouldn't be part of the case going forward. And they're like, all right, let's debate it. <laughs> What's the yeah. debate? Okay, all right, yeah. great. Then the, you know what, Alex Jones is in the middle of a lawsuit now. Can the Sandy Hook parents put, pick a judge that's their dad? <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> absurd, it's absurd. No, obviously, when you have a conflict of interest, you have to recuse yourself. So that I'm done with that point completely. And now, finally, on uh, January 6th, also in that segment that Hawley and Hannity did, they're talking about, oh, can you believe they're smearing her? And, and you saw them talking about smearing Justice Thomas for being involved with January 6th. Wait, I thought you thought January 6th was awesome. Josh Hawley was. Fist pumping, they're like, ah, boy. And they're all patriots and they're like the greatest guys on earth and they're political prisoners. So now it's a smear. Well, make up your mind. Which one is it? Yeah, 100%. But by the way, like, it's not like they don't understand the concept of recusal. They got Katanji Brown Jackson during her testimony to promise to recuse herself from any cases involving Harvard. Like a whole blanket category of cases that might potentially over the next decades involving a school that she was affiliated with. But a person you're married to, that's obviously a much more distant relationship. We don't need to worry about that. And I know, Jake, you probably feel it too, how it just grates how we try every day to get not the other side, because these are not honest actors. Sean Hannity, Josh Hawley, these are fundamentally dishonest people. They are paid to be dishonest. But to try to get some of their followers, some of their base perhaps, to acknowledge even briefly, if you're if you're watching this right now and you're a conservative, do you not think it's a little bit weird that they don't have any problem with the text messages about Guantanamo Bay and QAnon and all the conspiracy theories? Or about the seven hour gap in the White House call logs? They don't have any problem with that. Do you believe? That they would not have a problem with those things if they were invoking Joe Biden. Do you really? No, you know that you know that they don't. And the issue is that we expect consistency. It is actually a value. It is something that we value and we expect and we center in our you know analysis of politics. But on the other side, they don't. Nobody is listening to Sean Hannity and is like, well, you know, I like Sean Hannity. I'm a conservative, but I wish he was more consistent. They don't care about that. They just want to win. Victory, power, supremacy, those are the things that they center. And it can be very frustrating when you're trying to have an actual dialogue. Yeah, no, that, that's why I don't have any respect for any remaining Republican. Uh, they just gave up on logic entirely. And I'm a person uh, who believes in logic. Uh, so if you say facts don't matter, okay, then I can't have a conversation with you and I'm done with you. So like, okay, you're a Republican to John's point. She said that Biden and those guys were going to get locked up and put in a barge off of Guantanamo Bay because they had clearly stolen the election. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, yes, yes, no. No, every Republican's like, oh, I'm totally fine with it. Oh, yeah. their job being so unfair to Jenny Thomas. Poor Jenny Thomas. Okay, well then look, you belong in an insane asylum right next to her. So I I don't know how to communicate with you because you think crazy is awesome. You think logic sucks. So the recusal is the most obvious thing in the world. There isn't a single person in law or that has common sense would say, oh yeah, if your wife's part of the plot, you should be the judge. That's obviously insane. And every Republican is like, me no care about facts. Me no care about logic. Me like emotion. Me like my side, me hate other side. Okay, all right. Well, you're clear. You're clear. 
So there's nothing left to talk about. Just try to rescue family members and friends that are still left in that camp before they lose their mind completely. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.